Do you suffer from separation anxiety? One of the first things often people get told when they start skiing is keep the chest facing down the hill. Now that's not terrible advice and you certainly don't want to feel that you're initiating the turn by actually throwing the chest and forcing the skis to turn. That's kind of like the tail wagging the dog. So a calm upper body is quite useful, but trying to keep your chest always 100% facing down the hill can often cause problems. Just before I carry on, I want to make this a little bit clearer because it can be confusing. I'm talking about rotational separation. So where my upper body's facing relative to where my feet or skis are facing, not to be confused with lateral separation, which I'm always going to refer to as angulation. If you look at this image, this is what I mean by angulation. There's no right or wrong way to say this, I just find it less confusing to keep them separated. Yeah, see what I did there? It's kind of two ways I want you to think of this. Your upper body wants to be facing where you're going to be in the very near future. I'll elaborate a little bit. If I'm doing quite punchy short radius turns and really traveling down the, the, the hill and wanting to make my skis turn as quick as I can, keeping that chest facing down the hill will certainly help that. There's a very good kind of analogy that I use. If you think about, if I wanted to twist a spring and then somehow let go of the bottom half, the bottom half of the spring will twist round and come around very quickly. And that's a similar thing. If I'm, even if my feet are facing this direction and my chest is already facing down that hill, as I release the turn, the skis will come round. So if I'm trying to do short radius turns, I'm skiing bumps, I want a lot of rotation, that sort of condition, keeping the chest down the hill will really help. So looking at these short turns here, I'm really traveling straight down the hill. That's what I mean by your body wants to face where you're gonna be in the very near future. From the side here, you can really see what I mean by the spring analogy. As I release the turn, the skis want to point downhill much easier if my body is already facing that way. Even when I'm doing these quick kind of edge rolls, you can really see that my upper body is staying facing down the hill. It's a useful thing in these situations. Where it really changes is once you're starting to do more of a performance kind of carving turn a little bit longer. So again, if I'm doing a wider, more open turn, I can let the chest follow my skis. Again, I'm never pointing and twisting my body further than the skis. A good kind of indication is the sternum or the middle of the chest pointing over the tip of the downhill ski. So just trying to understand, it's okay to follow the skis more in a medium or longer turn. It doesn't make you a bad person. The sternum or belly button can pretty much point towards the tip of the downhill ski as the turn develops. This position will make it much more achievable to roll your feet gently over and create more edge. It's a very common issue and I still see a lot of information out there, how far I can turn my feet one way and then the other but keeping the hips there. That's a very awkward position. Your hips can follow the skis a little bit more. Same rule applies. I'm not trying to throw my hips into the turn more than the skis are actually turning, but allowing your hips to follow will be much more comfortable and more efficient as a position. This position is really the problem child of too much separation. Notice how much further ahead the inside ski is compared to the outside. I'm also very blocked and rigid, which will make it virtually impossible to absorb any small bumps and deal with the pressures being built up through the turn. In addition to this, it's virtually impossible to roll my feet and progressively edge.
Something else to bear in mind is where you can separate. I'll just pop back so you can see a little bit more. I can separate at my lower spine. So even though my, let's talk about the sort of sternum is facing more down the hill, my hips could actually follow the skis a little bit more. And that's gonna make you much stronger when it comes to actually trying to build an edge and maybe have a more performance turn. I don't wanna encourage this kind of hips down the hill, chest down the hill, and then the feet pointing one way. So bear in mind, the spine or the lower spine can help the hips follow the skis, even if you are trying to say separated a little bit more. But this classic keep your chest down the hill can really hold you back when it comes to a medium or longer performance turn and it's not as comfortable. A good skier can keep their chest facing down the hill while they're skiing, but do take that with a pinch of salt to let the hips and body follow the skis a little bit more. On a longer to medium turn, it will be much stronger and more comfortable.